uh, so the, uh, just a little bit of a preface. Uh, the, the next uh, topic we're going to talk about uh, briefly is open peer review. Uh, that was uh, the major topic at uh, an ASAP bio uh, session earlier this year. Uh, so they you know, jumped from uh, preprints to open peer review. The uh, that uh, made me wonder how many publishers Highwire works with are already doing open peer review. Uh, and I'd be interested, uh, I, I could identify BMJ, AMBO, Neurology, uh, and AS, uh, Plant Biology, ASPB, uh, ASAP, ASPB. See, so you got confused up there. Uh, I'm wondering, are there others who are doing open peer review uh, already? Uh, John, neurology is not. Is not? I thought you did some kind of, uh, I'll, I'll check. Um, is there anyone else? Okay. Uh, what I thought would be interesting would be to have uh, a presentation uh, about this topic by someone who's doing it. Uh, has some experiences with it. In London, uh, we had uh, presentations uh, from BMJ uh, on their use of open peer review. They, they do a lot of it uh, in a couple of different journals. Uh, and also uh, EMBO, um, uh, with its transparent process, uh, does open peer review. Uh, there is also, in, if you're interested in open peer review, uh, there was a, a session in London uh, where Sarah Schroeder, who's BMJ's researcher on publishing, uh, gave a history of the studies on open peer review, in other words, legitimate research studies uh, about uh, open peer review and its effects and concerns and so on. Mind what you mean, this, and this is what you say open peer review, that's talked about three different things, I think. All of the above. Uh, so I'm, I'm using a very broad and inclusive uh, definition. Uh, generally, people mean either open and signed or uh, uh, open but not signed reviews. I'm including both of those because the people are doing, uh, doing both. Um, the, and I wonder if you uh, have that information about uh, the, the research that's been done on it as well because there's a, when, this, when you have discussions about this in your uh, editorial groups, there's a lot of religious uh, feeling about it. Uh, and it seems good to, to bring your research in. So I asked uh, ASBB to talk about in their own experiences with it, and Jennifer signed up. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much, John. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Jennifer Regala. I'm the managing editor for the American Society of Plant Biologists, and I want to first thank Highwire for um, a great meeting. Um, this is not only my uh, first time speaking here, it's my first time even attending this meeting. So. Keep that in mind as you ask questions later on. Um, and I did practice this uh, presentation several times with my family, and my 16-year-old son has taken a um, speech communications course and got an A in it. So he felt he's an expert in um, speech communications and counted how many times I said, um, like this. So if I see any of you counting, don't give me the final number. It was 29 the first time I practiced for him. <laughs> so open peer review. Is it for us? Obviously, that's the biggest question to ask. And as John mentioned, lots of people have lots of different opinions about it, and it can be widely varying. Um, there are so many questions to ask when considering that question. What are the costs involved? How will your journal staff be impacted, and what will be required of them? What does your journal's editorial board think? Um, and of course, that's where a lot of the opinions will come from, if not all. Um, how will your organization define open peer review to your question? Um, will you seek permission to publish peer review reports from reviewers and authors? Or will open peer review reports um, be a part of how your um, publication does business? And what are your competitors doing? So I'll start with our journal, Plant Physiology, that does not do open peer review. So that's our largest volume journal. It's a monthly. It averages over 500 pages um, per journal. So sometimes you will, you know, when, it, when we used to print some of them, it looked like a phone book. Um, it's the most frequently cited plant biology journal. Um, they, as of 
As of the time that I'm speaking right now, we do not offer open peer review. However, it remains a hot topic of conversation with our editorial board. So why? Why doesn't plant physiology currently support open peer review? Um, a big thing is that um, our ed board feels that reviewers might avoid more critical and also useful analysis if um, in, in the submission process, especially early career reviewers. So people um, on the board are very concerned that reviewers will not be as open and honest with um, their feedback, even if it's kept anonymous. Also, our um, editor-in-chief, when I um, touched base with him, his name is Mike Blatt, and he um, was very concerned about the um, losing something in the process. If something is declined, but with an encouragement to resubmit, would some of um, the review be lost in the process? Um, another thing is that um, the plant physiology submissions, there's, there's a lot of discussion um, via confidential consultation. So how will that be included in an open peer review report? Um, another thing that um, weighs heavily on the mind, because of the large volume of the journal, the Ed Board has been concerned about the costs and manpower um, that ASPD, that those of us in the editorial office, will um, incur as a result. Um, however, all this being said, like I said, this is a very important um, topic of, of conversation, and we don't expect it to go away. It's something that our board and um, our editor-in-chief are committed to continuing to discuss. Um, <coughs> our next journal is Plant Direct. It's an open access sound science journal. We co-publish it with um, the Society for Experimental Biology and is published by Wiley. Um, so the editor-in-chief of Ivan Baxter, oh, excuse me, the editor-in-chief Ivan Baxter um, his quote sums it up. This is who we are, and this is what we are doing. Um, they post peer review reports for each research article published. No questions asked. It's a condition of um, publishing in the journal. Peer review reports are not completely open. The reviewers do remain anonymous, and the peer review reports don't publish until a paper is accepted. Why are these um, reports published by Plan Direct? The biggest thing when talking to um, Ivan Baxter and you know hearing his thoughts on it is to provide transparency and a clear record of the publication decisions to, to be exactly what they're trying to do, open. Um, also, it's to use a mentoring and teaching tool and to change the culture in peer review. So how are these reports published? Peer review reports are not edited in any way, and it's a condition for both authors and reviewers of the journal that all of these reports will be published. And they are included um, with the supporting information. At this time, I will note, um, Wiley just started tracking um, the usage of these, so I don't have any data to report <coughs> in that respect. Um, here's an, a very clear um, example of some actual comments from editors for Plan Direct. So moving on to the plan itself. This is our flagship journal. It's um, also a monthly journal. It's smaller. It's approximately like a little under 300 pages per month. Um, we, we publish novel research of special significance in plant biology in this journal. It's the top primary research journal in plant biology, and we're celebrating our 30th anniversary next year. Very excited about that. Um, the decision to move forward with open peer review was announced in October of 2016 by our editor-in-chief with a special editorial. I won't read this um, quote out loud, but it, it, it does do a good job of explaining um, Dr. Merkin's thoughts on the process. Again, much like Plant Direct, Plant Cell made this decision to demonstrate transparency in the review process, to use for journal club discussions, and to use as training tools. This editorial did state that in two years' time, which is coming up in October of 2018, um, we would reanalyze um, the usefulness of these reports, how much have they been used, and so forth. We do include these in our supplemental data, and so far, 
are still continuing to work with Hideminer to determine some usage statistics. I will say, though, that this, um, this conference has been great because I had some great ideas yesterday during one of the sessions. So we, we, we have some good ideas on how to move forward there. Um, how do we handle the open peer review for the plan cell? Invitations to review a manuscript include information about the peer review report. Reviewers remain anonymous in the peer review report. And after um, a manuscript is accepted by a reviewing editor, a peer review report is prepared by one of our science editors handling the paper. However, the note here, and this is different from Plant Direct, is that authors must approve the publishing of the peer review report. Um, our science editors who hand, are handling the paper anyway are also paid per report. So they are compiling, formatting, and hosting the report. These reports do follow a standard format and they're lightly edited. Again, that's different from how Plant Direct handles their open peer reviews. Authors then do get the chance to approve their report at that point. And these, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, they're include, included with our supplemental data. Here, a picture of um, what one of our peer review reports looks like with a continuation. And I will end asking if you have any questions. This is a shameless um, <coughs> picture of my co workers, two beautiful puppies, hoping that you won't ask any. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, I end. Any questions? <laughs>
Um, and I think that uh, and Santa Elsia is planning to rule out this um, or offer it to the journals that it publishes in the coming year. I think there's five journals already that are doing this in the Elsia platform. And one thing to your point, Susan, I just wanted to add, actually, that um, Ivan Baxter, after I submitted these slides, did reach out to me. He's the editor-in-chief for Plan Direct, and he reached out to um, remind me that he had signed on to a letter for supporting, and then there's a commentary that's set to be um, published a week from today, on August 30th in Nature, um, about this open letter. So it's Sabia Merchant, our plant cell editor-in-chief, and then um, Ivan also signed that letter. And there's a lot of big names on that. So we'll be looking out for that. Yeah, no, that's great to tell because General Cell Biology also signed that letter. So I didn't know when the commentary was coming out. So it's, thank you for It's that. the 30th. OK, cool, thank you. So I've seen a draft, but I wasn't allowed to share that. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, I know uh, BMJ's research uh, on Peer review has found uh, just what uh, Susan reported that it actually makes no difference. Uh, but I think what John was making, I think, a subtle point that uh, a reviewer might see an extra burden to preparing something that they knew would be published. Uh, that is, it has to be of certain quality to become part of a permanent archive, uh, as opposed to dashing off some notes to a colleague. Uh, associate editor who knows you and, and so on. So I think that's, a, I hadn't thought about, uh, about that. Thanks for adding that. Uh, Suzanne and, and then Rob? I had two questions actually. The first one is do you publish all of the reports from all rounds of peer review? And the second one is do you, I might have missed this, you may have mentioned it, do you publish the author's response to the peer review? We do, yes. And yes, except for, um, so I, let me just take you back to the slides to let you land on these, um, what they look like. First, I'll take you back to the plant direct. You'll see the responses from the authors are on the right-hand side um, and in response to the editor's comments. Um, and then for plant cell, you'll see and I, I didn't include the whole report because it was pretty lengthy, but you'll see the first editorial decision was declined, and then submission received, and then it, and then it goes, it takes you through the process. Everything's dated, and all of the information is included there. Rob? Two questions related to uh, not editing report. The first one is, if an author, uh, uh, Authors are approving reports. Do they ever come back and request something to be edited? And how do you handle that? Well, for Plant Direct, I am not actually hyper involved in that process because I'm not the managing editor of that journal. So they are they are a part. We, we partner in that, but Wiley handles all of that. So I don't I don't have the honest answer to that. But for um, Plant Cell, we have a well respected pool of science editors that we use all of the time. So they. Um, from what I understand, anecdotal feedback, it, we don't have any um, feedback on how, how those reports are edited. And then the second question is, and I don't know if you do this, but if you have uh, reviewer reports transferred from another journal and you accept that paper, uh, do you publish those? And if so, do you leave the original journal name in any of the comments? We do not.
some uh, really thought that younger um, uh, members would feel a lot very intimidated uh, about possible repercussions. Um, they looked at the fact that neurology is, you know, it's a fairly small community compared to DMJ and, and all those who uh, contribute there, and that uh, it would be uh, more easy to identify people. Um, and even uh, if the papers were unsigned, you know, they, they felt that uh, a lot of the, the reviewers for particular areas would be identifiable to other people. So they really had a lot of problems with it. And of course, we realized that some of probably those are the vocal ones at the meeting. And so afterward, uh, we outlined the questions again and sent them to the board. And uh, we got 58 responses back from our about 80 plus um, board members. And um, most of them, about two thirds of the people, really did not like the idea at all, even unsigned reviews for the reasons I've mentioned. And uh, some of them waxed very philosophical in there um, uh, about uh, you know, transparency and really whether transparency is something we really need uh, at a, a, when we're doing a, what is a confidential review process um, that is like you know, a board meeting of some sort. If you're in a corporate board, you're bound legally to not um, to you know, agree within board uh, um, uh, as far as, as what you present to the public later or to memberships later. Um, and so we've ended up and just made this decision and everybody on the team <laughs> hasn't even heard about it yet, but we are planning uh, next week to resolve this and, and we are, um, have decided not to do this, uh, not to have open peer review. And instead, we're going to go to a, a, a model where we, um, we're going to be choosing some, what we think, excellent peer reviews for um, educational purposes, get permissions from everyone before we publish them. But sometimes, this is where we see examples of our very best writing when people wax eloquent in their peer reviews about a paper and, uh, and uh, really do some good writing. So we, see that that would give us a chance to showcase some of those good reviews and to, and to have them there for educational purposes so that others can see them as examples. So that's where we ended up on. That sounds, that sounds, a lot of that sounds very similar to what I was saying about print theology, our journal, that at this time. And will you publish those as commentaries or, or literally as peer reviews? I, no, I think that we'll publish them as peer reviews. We'll, we'll have them uh, in a specific like a supplemental um, uh, information uh, rather than a commentary, an editorial commentary. No. Thanks. Thank you for presenting. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, any other questions on this topic? All right, thank you very much, Jen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so uh, this morning, uh, uh, as 